Welcome to another Keep Safe on the Net video. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at how to spot a romance scammer. They're sometimes called sweetheart scammers. They're everywhere and some of them are very convincing. At least they are if you don't know what's happening. Where are you most likely to find them? I guess the answer to that is pretty much anywhere. You'll find them on dating groups, on social media, You'll find them on dating websites. You can be contacted by them on social media. I recently made a video about one romance scammer who was pretending to be a famous celebrity musician. So they're everywhere. And it's not how they contact you that's important. It's knowing the signs to look for so that you don't become a victim. Red flag number one. Many scammers will repeatedly ask you not to tell anyone else that you're talking to them. They'll tell you that your conversations need to remain confidential. This is because they don't want any of your friends or family to warn you that you're talking to a scammer. They'll say things such as, As you have promised, babe, do not tell anyone about me. Please, I want you to keep our conversation to yourself alone, please. Or don't discuss our secret talks with any of your friends. I don't trust friends that much, lol. Anything they can think of to stop you telling friends or family so that they can't warn you that you might be talking to a scammer. Red flag number two. Children. Many scammers will tell you that they have young children that they can't be with. The children will be in boarding school, or they'll be staying with a relative, or they'll be with a nanny. They'll say things such as, I'm widowed with three lovely girls who school in Belgium, my dear. My daughter is in the state with her nanny. I have a daughter born in Berlin, but went to California with her aunt when she was three years old. I have an eight-year-old son who stays with my mother. Red flag number three. Horrible death of a relative. Many scammers will tell you that they've lost their wife, their child, their parents, or sometimes whole families in horrible accidents, a road accident, a plane crash, and more recently, death from COVID-19. All of the following were left as comments on the main keepsafeonthenet.co.uk blog. Horrible past he does not want to talk about, dead wife, parents recently killed and elder brother has died of Covid in Italy. Lost my wife and kid in a car wreck over five years ago, may her soul rest in peace. He lost his wife to cervical cancer six years ago and they had a stillborn son. His parents and sister were supposedly killed in a car accident in London. His late wife died of breast cancer 10 years ago. Both his parents had passed away. All these stories are designed to gain the sympathy of a potential victim at the start of the scam. Red flag number four. His or her job takes them away from home for extended periods of time, often serving as a soldier or as an engineer on a ship. These are a few of the stories that I or readers of my blog have been told. I'm a sailor in United Nation Cargo Shipping Agency and I'm also a businessman. I work with the UN Army here in Syria. He is a marine engineer on an oil rig in Indonesia. I am a marine engineer by profession. I work with Mediterranean Shipping Company. He is a marine engineer on an oil platform. He is apparently in the USA Army serving in Iraq. All jobs, which later in the scam, will give the scammer the opportunity to tell their potential victim that they don't have access to their bank account for some reason or another. Red flag number five, which follows on from what I've just said. The scammer can't access his or her money for some reason. I don't come with my Mastercard due to my job. I have lost most important thing to me, so for that reason I don't always come to the sea with my card. I told you, I don't have access to my account. He was telling me that he has money trouble in Malaysia, that his ATM doesn't work and he's stuck there. He had no access to any of his large amount of money due to internet not working on the platform. This, of course, is where the scammer starts to get serious. He's grooming his victim to find out whether or not they will send him money. Red flag number six. Money. It doesn't take long for the scammer to start taking a curious interest in how much money your house is worth or how much money you're earning. I'm sure house cost a lot in London, my dear. 
How much did you get from your divorce, babe? How much was given to you? Is it up to 200,000? And you want to get a house of how much? My online character always tells scammers that she's divorced, that her divorce settlement has just come through, and that she has a good job as a self-employed person. Questions like this, of course, are designed to give the scammer some idea of how much money they might be able to steal from you. Red flag number seven. He or she loves you. It doesn't take long for most scammers to start telling you how much they love you and to start sending you ridiculous amounts of love emojis. I probably don't even need to comment on the next few screenshots. I apologise to any visually impaired listeners. I'm showing a selection of hearts, kisses and other love emojis that have been sent to me. This is the part of the scam where the scammer wants to start playing with your emotions. Red flag number eight. He or she is desperate to send you a present and won't take no for an answer. Often the scammers will claim that they're sending you high value presents. There can be more than one reason for this. Most often it's because the scammers will then start asking you for shipping or import costs. But sometimes it's because they're fishing to see whether or not you've given them a correct address. My readers tell me things such as He sent me a video of the gifts he sent me. There were two pairs of shoes, but there were also many jewels, watches and $100,000. He sent pictures of the items in the box, such as a diamond ring, designer perfume, handbags and lots of gold jewellery. So this guy has luggage with $50,000 plus a diamond necklace and other jewellery for me iPhone 11 was produced last two year and 12 last year. But don't worry, I will get you a 12, babe. I know you will like it. And to show that some won't take no for an answer, he was very pushy about wanting clothes and shoe size. Even though I said I don't want anything, he pushed and got US address. I repeated that I do not want anything and not to send the parcel. He said that they had left port and the parcel was on the way. Please, Never give your address to someone that you've met online, unless or until you've met them in person. Red flag number nine. The inevitable demand for money. Reasons for needing you to send them money are many, varied and increasingly inventive. Right now, the total money I need for the court case is £15,000, but I don't have up to the full amount, baby, I just need £7,000. This scammer had just told me that at his divorce hearing, his wife had claimed everything and his bank account had been frozen. He claims he is a marine engineer on an oil platform who suddenly needs money to fly off the platform at his own expense, just a cool $1,840. You are going to pay an estimated fee of $3,500. This commenter on Keep Safe in the Net had just been asked for money to release her sweetheart from his contract with a shipping company. Then he proceeded to tell me he needed an additional $700 to complete his travel plans. This scammer had already taken $800 from my reader, and this shows that once you start sending scammers money, they will continue to ask. Supposedly, the machine that one of the workers was using broke down, and it will cost him $21,000 to fix. He's got 9000 on hand, supposedly, then was able to borrow 10000 from a friend, but it's still not enough, so he needed to borrow $3,000 from me, and will return it when we see each other. I will be asked to pay $11,000 for the delivery of the parcel. Like a fool, I sent some money to his son for his birthday. Once you've shown that you're willing to send money to a scammer, they will continue asking, and the more money you send, the more money they will ask for. And last but not least, red flag number 10. Victim bullying. If you start refusing to comply with the scammer's demands, or you start asking too many questions, they will try to bully you. I suspect that some of the victims who give in to this bullying have previously been victims of abusive family relationships and are used to giving in to bullies. Do you forget my job? You know that I'm in the ocean. I said I'm not paying it. When I contacted him, he became very annoyed and said he risked everything for me. When I refuse to do what he wants, 
He gets angry and is abusive. He did email me and called me a selfish, heartless expletive and that I didn't deserve anyone or anything. And finally, this charming scammer, who wasn't happy when I refused to send him that £7,000 for his divorce. He continued playing the heartbroken victim for days, telling me, it's so painful, how heartless you are, you're truly a scam, you're not who you say you are, it's so painful, you pretended to be someone else, you're heartless, I just hate you, you're heartless, you don't deserve to live. I hope this video helps you to understand how romance scammers work. I suspect that people who sign up to dating websites or who join dating groups on social media may sometimes be the more obvious potential victims because they're looking to form a relationship, they're looking for love and they're looking for someone who will say nice things to them. So keep your wits about you if you decide to try online dating and be especially wary of random friend requests on social media. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like it, please share it, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again in another Keep Safe on the Net video on YouTube.